New York, capital city of the American dream. Drawn from each corner of the world, its population is what makes this city so exciting and unique. In New York, just a few streets separate China from Italy. Here are the richest of the rich, and also the poorest. Contrasts come face to face as in no other city. And due to this tension, New York lives. The Empire State Building is a symbol of the glamour and fascination of New York. For 40 years, it was the tallest building in the world, and still today, the most elegant skyscraper. The Art Deco Building, 102 stories and standing 381 meters high, was opened in 1931 and took only one year and 45 days to complete. Over 3,400 workmen erected an average of four and a half stories each week. That was, and is, a world record. 16,000 people work here, and every year, two and a half million visitors enjoy its breathtaking views. It's the Chrysler Building which catches the eye on New York's skyline. Built in 1930 as both a personal monument and company headquarters. The slim and imposing skyscraper in American Art Deco style stands 319 meters tall with 77 stories. Its unusual tower is decorated with stylized car motifs bonnets, hubcaps, and car wheels of the 1930s. With Manhattan, the city began to touch the sky. No city in the world has as many diverse skyscraper designs as New York. The basic design was a steel skeleton and facade. But its most essential feature, housed in a secure shaft, was invented by New York mechanic Elisha Otis, the elevator. The World Trade Center is probably New York's most extraordinary building and is 411 meters high. Completed in 1973, its twin towers dominate the largest shopping center in the city. 50,000 people work in each of its 110-story towers, and for the most spectacular views, its elevator takes only 58 seconds to bring 75,000 visitors to the top every day. Here, the World Financial Center, with its glass-enclosed winter garden atrium, shops and cafes. Marble and brass provide the splendor. The 16 giant palm trees, an exotic touch. Manhattan is not only skyscrapers, it's also the financial center. Here beats the heart of the metropolis. Wall Street received its name from a wall which had been erected to protect the emerging town from the Native American Indians. Its foundations were laid in 1792. The young state, which suffered greatly during the American War of Independence, required finance. 
24 bankers met under a tree in Wall Street and founded the New York stock market, at first located in a coffee house. In 1903, the New York Stock Exchange, today the largest and most important stock market in the world, was opened for business. Although on Wall Street, its entrance is at the side. The stockbroker's sign language was developed so that news of buying and selling could be quickly communicated to those in nearby buildings. The success story of the building and real estate magnate Donald Trump is typical of New York. In the 1970s, he made a fortune by wise speculation, buying at a low price and selling when the market peaked. Here beats the pulse of the city. Everything involves money and power. Even the Black Friday of 1929, which triggered a global economic crisis, could not touch this financial center. New York is a powerhouse of ceaseless activity, a constant melee of car horns, sirens and screeching tires. This is truly New York, and what an experience. Hectic, loud, provocative, big and powerful. Amazingly, around 7 million people live here. The tallest skyscrapers, the biggest bridges and, at its centre, a public park as large as in any European city. Originally, and unlike Europe, there was no formal city planning. People built how and where they pleased. Official planning began in 1811. A street system was drawn up for Manhattan. However, with no provision for a green zone. But in 1856, and due to public pressure, Central Park was opened for the people. Behind the Rockefeller Center, in stone and marble, is the Neo-Gothic St. Patrick's Cathedral. Near the East River, an impressive colossus formed of glass and steel towers, the United Nations Building, since the 1950s seat of various UN organizations and the annual meeting place of the General Assembly. Greenwich Village is one of the few areas of the city that has no clearly defined symmetry. Attractive steps grace many of its 19th century houses of red brick and brown sandstone. Until the 1960s, many important artists and authors lived here, such as Edgar Allan Poe and Henry James. Today, it's an expensive residential area, with less bohemian characters than in its colourful past. From the early 1900s, Italian immigrants settled in Little Italy, today under threat of encroachment from other quarters. Chinatown is now spilling over Canal Street. The expensive apartments are now home to yuppies, and tourists pour into its streets. But some traditions remain intact. The Italian lifestyle, and the hustle and bustle of the mamas and the papas with their bambinos. Restaurants, coffee houses and delicatessens line Mulberry Street, 
Its small houses and zigzag fire escapes rest firmly in the hands of astute businessmen who, with European panache, are keen entrepreneurs. And when the decorations come out, the Italian atmosphere is all pervasive. In cramped conditions, 150,000 New York Chinese live in Chinatown, many unable to speak a word of English. Chinese characters predominate, with restaurants and even kitchens on every street corner and shops with typical Asian souvenirs, scrolls, silk shoes, earthenware and dragon designs. The Chinese come from the Republic of China, Taiwan and Hong Kong, People here are a law unto themselves, more hectic, noisier, and even more chaotic. Chinatown is one of the most fascinating parts of the city, but hopelessly overpopulated and a little shabby. New Yorkers go to Chinatown mainly to eat. The name Soho derives from south of Houston Street. In the 1970s, this old industrial area attracted artists. Its abandoned factories and warehouses provided them with studios and living quarters. Gradually, it became a sought-after district, its properties being sold at a premium, and many converted to expensive galleries, outlandish boutiques and unusual restaurants and the wealthy moved in, favouring the upper floors. Soho's cast-iron facades, with their wonderfully detailed artwork, suddenly proved valuable and were carefully restored. The old harbour acted as a catalyst for New York's rise as a world city. Goods from all over the world were loaded onto the piers of South Street Seaport. Overseas trade started here, as the world's largest sailing ships offloaded their vital cargoes. Next is the Fulton Fish Market, the largest fish market in the world. Daily, at 4 a.m., 75 wholesalers trade 350,000 pounds of fish. Today, the seafood no longer arrives along the East River, but in refrigerator trucks. Brooklyn Bridge was regarded as the world wonder of a dreamer. German architect John Roebling designed a bridge which would join Manhattan to Brooklyn, from the largest American city to the third largest. After Roebling's sudden death, his son, Washington, along with his wife, completed the planning of this magnificent structure. Originally the longest suspension bridge in the world, it took 14 years to build. In 1883, work commenced, and five years later, Brooklyn was indeed joined to New York. The 1.8 kilometer long steel suspension bridge was an impressive symbol of American pioneering spirit. The Brooklyn Bridge, a New York legend a miracle of 19th century bridge construction. The two bridge piers tower among thousands of steel cables 89 meters high. Its structure reaches 530 meters across the East River and used to be called the eighth wonder of the world. 
Under its neo-Gothic arches, cars, trains, and pedestrians go their separate ways. New York is situated on the same latitude as Naples and lies on the delta of the Hudson River. Its weather varies from freezing, snowy winters to warm, humid summers. Its original inhabitants arrived from Asia about 7,000 years ago, traveling across Alaska to the American East Coast. In 1624, 32 Dutch and Walloon families arrived at the southern tip of Manhattan, the island of the hills, and founded the fort New Amsterdam. The Dutch settled on the island, dug canals through the hills, and forged its landscape. Two years later, the first governor bought the island from the native Indians for buttons and glass pearls equivalent to 60 guilders. From 1647, Peter Stuyvesant ruled as governor over a settlement of 300 inhabitants. However, the British planned to extend their overseas territories. Their warships blocked the harbour in 1664 and, without firing a single shot, took the city. Stuyvesant handed over the city to the English without a fight and New Amsterdam became New York. Under British rule, the city thrived. Maritime trade was improved and important trading ports developed. Fifty years later, during the American War of Independence, New York became strategically important. And after the Declaration of Independence on the 4th of July 1776, the British were forced to surrender the city. For some years, New York was the capital city of the newly founded United States of America. New York's city planners took no account of green areas. It was only after a public outcry that an area as large as the European Principality of Monaco was designated as one. After 20 years in its creation, it was completed in 1873. The green pasture of the city was opened. Central Park. Each tree, shrub, bridge, path and pond was planned in detail. When the weekend weather's fine, Central Park becomes a huge play area. Roller skaters, street musicians, horse-drawn carriages, bands and boats. The Circle Line riverboat journey around Manhattan Island is the city's most fascinating round trip. A journey on the Hudson River from the west end of 42nd Street and past the southern tip of Manhattan. Under the bridges of the East River, wonderful views emerge of enormous skyscraper canyons. On the 28th of October, 1886, the most famous statue in North America was officially opened to the thunderous boom of 21 cannon, the Statue of Liberty. Constructed in Paris, the statue was gifted to America by France to express its support for the American Revolution. The sculptor, Frederick Bartholdi, and the designer, Gustav Eiffel, created a structure 102 meters high with a weight of 225 tons. In 300 pieces and packed in 200 crates, the lady began her journey across the Atlantic. 
a gracious iron frame design supported by a central column and an external copper coating. The first 10 stories can be reached by elevator. From there, a spiral staircase leads up the inside of the statue to the crown. Another 12 stories and 365 steps. The view is breathtaking. At the bottom of the statue is a museum. Each phase of construction is displayed here and comparison made with the size and dimensions of other buildings. The history of the city's original inhabitants to the mass immigration is shown in different forms. A huge influx of immigrants made it imperative to open a well-organized reception center. Close to the Statue of Liberty, Ellis Island was selected. Its massive main building must have seemed like a palace to the 17 million poor immigrants who were screened and examined there before they were either allowed entry or sent back on the next ship. In the park, there is a huge plaque which contains the names of all the immigrants who passed through Ellis Island. It's also where many Americans find the names of their ancestors. From private donations, the reception center has been renovated and adapted into a museum. New York, a pulsating city that never sleeps. In the evening, Manhattan takes on a party atmosphere. Fantastic neon illuminates the night, and assorted restaurants compete for business. Broadway, with its theaters and cinemas. Times Square, a place for street artists. A remarkable skyline, and Brooklyn Bridge, a dream turned into reality. New York is the world capital of entertainment. is alive and well, thanks to the energy of its people and their thirst for prosperity, the pressure of competition and hunger for success, being the commercial center of the universe, tireless and ever going forward. New York, capital city of money and entertainment. <laughs>